Welcome back to Educator.com. Today we're going to deal with our, our final lecture in this uh, series, and that has to do with income inequality and distribution. So in, in today's lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to define the poverty threshold in the United States and, and trends of poverty in particular in the United States. We're going to identify groups whose members have the uh, highest poverty rate, we're going to discuss uh, briefly the root causes of poverty, what makes people poor. And then we're going to differentiate between the mean and median income. We're going to understand the significance of the Gini coefficient, which is the most widely used measure of inequality. We're going to identify the three types of tax systems. And then finally, we're going to compare uh, different types of welfare programs. So this, this last unit is is going to be addressing a lot of situations that arise in, in, in the economy and, and ways that government try to address the, the kind of dual goals of efficiency versus equity. So the definition of poverty. So you have the definition of poverty in the United States. Uh, it's kind of an arbitrary task. Okay. What, what, what is it meant by ar arbitrary? Well, again, what is what does it mean to be poor? What what some person might be considered might consider to be poor might actually be middle class uh, by certain world standards. So, uh, it, defining the poverty rate in the United States, uh, there's going to be something arbitrary about it. But we're going to go by the definitions that the government has provided. So, in the United States, the poverty threshold is the minimum income required to purchase the necessities of life. Again, this is going to be somewhat arbitrary. So. What is poor in the United States might be different than what's poor in Mexico, than what's poor in Canada, than what's poor in uh, European countries. But again, there's a, a specific threshold, and if you're below that threshold in the United States, then you would be considered poor. Uh, so those that fall below this threshold would be considered poor. Now, you know, citing specific numbers here, in 2009, for an adult living alone, uh, the figure was set at uh, $10,956. For two adults and two children, it was at twenty one thousand seven hundred fifty six. So now, if if you increase the household to, you know, four, uh, two adults and and eight children, the number might be closer to like forty thousand. But again, uh, using consistent standards and depending on the the members of of individuals living in the household, uh, the income threshold is gonna is gonna vary. So what, what's kind of interesting to know in terms of poverty trends here. The poverty rates fell steeply in the 1960s down to around 10 to 15 percent, which is coincides with the, the time uh, a lot of welfare measures, including Social Security, welfare, a lot of these measures were enacted in the 1960s uh, with uh, Lyndon Johnson's Great Society programs. Uh, however, in the 1970s, despite, despite increased prosperity, the numbers have stayed relatively stagnant. So the goals to, to end poverty as we know it uh, hasn't really been achieved through a lot of these welfare programs. So initially there was, uh, there was a decrease in, in the poverty rates, but what we've seen is over the years, uh, the poverty rates, again, despite increased prosperity overall, has not, has not necessarily been uh, spread out evenly. So um, we're, we're going to see what are the root causes and, and how do you examine this, uh, this phenomenon here. So who are the poor? Who exactly are the poor in the United States? Well, in uh, 2009, again, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, uh, you had 43.5 million Americans in poverty, or roughly 14.3% of the population. Or, if you want to you know, break it down, one in, seven, one in seven people in the United States were considered poor. So that's quite a significant amount of people living in poverty, uh, for a relatively prosperous nation. So that's, again, uh, 43.5 million Americans in, in a country uh, exceeding 300 million people. So, uh, again, while that rate might be better than most countries, it's still kind of an alarming number. Now, if you kind of break down that group, uh, in the United States, 25.9% of African Americans and 25.3% of Hispanics were considered poor. Uh, however, um, you know, you have 9.4% of non-Hispanic whites uh, that fell below the poverty threshold. Again, so these are, these are just trends. If, if you break them down into 
uh, different different races, uh, ethnicities, you're going to see kind of disparities in in the poverty rate. I mean, the most significant significant trends in poverty that you see is uh, female headed households had a poverty rate of 32.5 percent, while married couples had a relatively smaller rate of a poverty rate of 5.8 percent. So you're you're looking at a number that's between five to six times greater that uh, a household that has a, a single female a household is five to six times more likely to be in poverty than a married couple household. Again, by, by a fairly significant amount here. Another category, uh, there's many part-time workers that consist of a category analysts refer to as the working poor, usually because part-time workers, uh, part-time work does not include health benefits, retirement, or paid vacation which are, are, again, elements that, that can take people out of poverty. Uh, so part-time workers, so they're working and they're working, but they're still falling below the poverty uh, threshold here. So uh, these are you know, some of the characteristics, some of the trends that, um, that characterize poverty, at least in the United States.